In this video, we will introduce one of our research topics, cell immortalization, K4 DK method. As you might know, cell culture is a vital part of biological research. Researchers obtain tissue samples from the subject of their research and culture them in media to get the primary cells. However, primary cells are known to have limited proliferation. And they also die through a process called apoptosis after going through cellular senescence. Senescence is set off by damages or injuries associated with the aging process such as telomere shortening, DNA damages, mitochondrial dysfunction, tumor suppressors and cell cycle inhibitors. Because they are not long lasting, scientists would need to take new samples each time they stop proliferating. The process is actually pretty tedious, time consuming and quite expensive to culture new primary cell samples. Not to mention that some samples might vary to another which can lead to inconsistent data. So, in order to overcome these problems, scientists developed a method to make primary cells last longer. They did it by mutating their cells so that they escape cellular aging and have infinite proliferation without altering the major functions of the cell. Cool, isn't it? It is called cell immortalization. This method produces cells that multiply infinitely, are easier to culture in in vitro, and possesses similar genotype and phenotype to their parental cells. There are different methods of cell immortalization. The first is by spontaneous mutation. Primary cells underwent spontaneous genetic mutation to resist senescence. The second is by introducing a viral gene, such as the simian virus 40 T antigen or SV40 T antigen. SV40 T antigens bind to cellular proteins such as tumor suppressors RB family or P53 to inhibit the activity in the cell, promoting immortalization of the cells. Another method is to express exogenous telomerase with its transcriptase or third protein in the cells. This protein can extend the telomere, a repetitive sequence of DNA at the ends of chromosomes, which will gradually be depleted during cellular division. The last method is by combining the expression of cell cycle suppressor protein and third protein to improve the immortalization of the third immortalization method. Presently, these methods are being widely used in research to lengthen the shelf life of primary cells. One of the pathways that regulate senescence in cells is the P16RB pathway. In this pathway, the tumor suppressor protein P16 acts as an inhibitor of the CDK4 which results in the insulated phosphorylation of the RP protein, leading to the arrest of the cell cycle in the G1 phase. Our laboratory is researching another cell immortalization method, a combination expression of cell cycle regulators and third protein called the K4DD method. It is a method involving the exogenous expression of mutant CDK4, human-derived cyclin-D1 and third protein in primary cells. With our method of immortalization, the P16 binding site on the CDK4 is mutated to avoid the binding of P16 to the CDK4 cyclin-D1 complex. This will lead to the phosphorylation of the RB protein, the release of E2F protein, and the progression of the cell cycle from G1 phase to the S phase. In addition, we also inserted the third protein to maintain the length of the telomeres. We conducted several experiments using the K4DT cells to confirm their immortalization properties. Examples of the experiments conducted are PCR, Western blot, SA beta gal staining, population doubling or PDSA, cell cycle analysis, and karyotype analysis. Currently, our laboratory has published several papers regarding this K4DT method of immortalization. We have established several types of immortalized cell lines, such as Q1 
human myogenic cells, human dermal papilla cells, pluripotent cells, macaque cells, bovine cells, the Tsushima leopard cat cells, miniature dachshund dog cells, porcine cells, the bonin flying fox cells, and the cells of the midget buffalo. To learn more about this research, feel free to browse our published papers.